In this lesson, we're going to be talking about Objective 3.4, Ideal Gas Law. This objective states explain the relationship between the macroscopic properties of a sample of gas or a mixture of gas using the ideal gas law. So a few things, remember there are four gas variables. We have pressure, volume, mole, and temperature. Um, so pressure talks about the force exerted by the gas molecules on the walls of the container. You can see here I have a pressure conversion. There's going to be some example problems you may need to convert between one unit to another. Um, don't worry, this is on your equation sheet. Volume is going to be the space occupied by the gas. So remembering that a thousand milliliters are in a liter, or one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. This is very, very important. Mole, this is amount of gas particles. So remember, uh, we learned about moles in objective 1.1. So there might be some problems you're given grams and you need to convert grams to moles using the molar mass. And then temperature talks about the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules. This right here is your conversion. If you need to convert Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273.15. This is so, so, so important. Um, just know that Celsius is not the true zero. Kelvin, the Kelvin scale, is the true zero. Um, just know that if you are given Celsius, convert to Kelvin if you do any, uh, any math whatsoever. So let's first fill out this chart and let's talk about the inverse and direct relationships of some of uh, our gas, uh, some of our gas variables. So here, inverse means that if one goes up, the other goes down, or if one goes down, the other goes up. And so what two gas variables share this relationship? Pressure and volume, and then temperature and mole. So here, if you, in, uh, if you, let's say, increased the volume, you're going to decrease the pressure because they have an inverse relationship. And so here to draw what that would look like an inverse relationship of pressure volume, it would look something like an exponential decay. Next for our direct relationships, if one goes up, the other goes up, or if one goes down, the other goes down. We actually have four different types. We have pressure and temperature, volume and temperature, pressure and moles, and volume in moles. These are our direct relationships. So here, increase temperature, we increase pressure, okay? Here, this graph is gonna look like this. If we looked at volume in moles, a direct relationship will just be a linear line, okay? All right, going up here, let's talk about uh, three different types of laws um, and when, when you would use them versus other ones. So, Real quick, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to fill in the first two rows and then we're going to talk about when to use them. Okay, so the ideal gas law is PV. Oops, hold on. PV equals NRT. Here, what does each variable mean? P is pressure. Here, I'm going to zoom in. Here, it should be an ATM, which is atmospheres. V is going to be in volume. This is going to be in liters. Then we're going to have N, which is moles, which it will be in moles. T is temperature, which should be in Kelvin. And then we have this thing called R. It's the ideal gas law constant. You will have this on your equation sheet. Um, again, keyword, it is a constant. Here it's 0 0.08206, and it actually has all four of those gas variables units. So it's liters times ATM over mole Kelvin. The only purpose of R is to make the units cross off. We then have the combined gas law. So what that looks like is PV over TN equals PV over TN. But the key thing to know is one side is going to be the initial conditions, while the other side will be the final conditions. So let me just write that right here. So here I is my initial condition. So this will be the starting um, what 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 your gas system is at. And then the final side conditions is what would happen if you change the initial. OK, so here same variables on either side. Um, they must have same units to cross off. So like if your pressure was in TOR on the initial side, make sure the pressure 
on the final Citus tour. It doesn't have to be in atmospheres, liters, and it needs to be in Kelvin, but your pressure and volume uh, can be either, it just has to be the same on either side for that variable. Then we have Dalton's law of partial pressure. So this is from your equation sheet. You are told P total equals PA plus PB plus PC plus dot, dot, dot. PA, the partial pressure of A is taking XA times P total, which XA is if you have the moles of A divided by total moles. So let's talk about this. So P total takes the, is the total pressure of each, uh, total pressure of each gas's pressure. So it takes the sum of all the individual, all the individual gases inside that container. Okay. Next PA is some gas A. So this A could be CO2. It could be nitrogen. It's going to be oxygen. Just the denotion of A, B, and C is that they're all three different gases. Okay. And then XA is a mole fraction of A, which essentially is your relative abundance of A. So remember in mass spectroscopy, we learned about relative abundance versus percent abundance. Remember, relative abundance is going to be considered the decimal form of the percent. So here, if your mole fraction was 0.8, that means that that gas makes up 80% of that mixture. And I knew that because I did 0.8 times 100, converting from the decimal form to the percent. So let's talk about all three of these sets of conditions. So in the ideal gas law, we are assuming one set of conditions with one singular gas. So you will only use the ideal gas law if it's one gas and one set of conditions. So if you are just working with oxygen and it's in a closed container and you just want to know what's going on inside, this is when you would use the ideal gas law. You would use the combined gas law with two sets of conditions, your initial and final. Here, one singular gas as well. So here, and again, we're assuming pure. I need to write that. We're assuming pure. So here, let's say we had oxygen in the container and we know it's set of conditions, but then we ended up decreasing the volume. How does that affect the other gas variables inside? Okay. And then Dalton's law of partial pressures can be a little confusing. Confusing. So um, John Dalton was able to figure out if you know, because looking at the variables given, okay, we see with Dalton's law, the only two gas variables it mentions is P for pressure and moles because it's assuming that your volume and your temperature are staying constant, okay? So here it has one set of conditions, and this is while volume and temp are constant. Now we use Dalton's law of partial pressures if we're given a mixture of gases. Here, we're gonna have more than one gas. So if you had oxygen and nitrogen inside a container, we can use Dalton's laws, it, Dalton's equations to figure out what the total pressure is. And, and again, we can use his equations if we know moles and we know um, the total pressure. And if we don't know total pressure in moles, we can still, we can still use the ideal gas law. We would just need to know volume and temperature because Dalton's law does not have volume and temperature because they make the assumption that it's staying constant. All right, moving on. Let's try some problems together. All right. So we're going to do the first one together. Then I'm going to have you do the second one. Okay, so if I have four moles of a gas at this pressure and this volume, what is the temperature in Celsius? So here, try to think about what's happening. We're given moles, pressure, volume. Here, I wasn't told two pressures, two moles, two, vol 
two volumes. In that case, we would be using the combined gas law. Here, I'm working on one gas, so it's not Dalton's law. Here, this is strictly just the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. So I want to solve for temperature. So if I rearrange my equation, T equals PV over nR, and that's because I just divided by nR. So here, let's plug in what we know. Pressure will be 5.60 atms. Volume will be 12 liters. Um, moles is 4 moles. And then our, val our value is 0 0.08206 liters times atm mole times Kelvin. Now, if you're wondering how did I know that I didn't need to change any of the variables, well, here our R value, we need our volume in liters, we need our pressure in atms, and we need our moles in moles. And so here when we get temperature, we're going to get Kelvin, which is totally fine. Just we're going to have to convert Kelvin to Celsius because our question wants Celsius. Okay, we'll do that at the very end. So here after calculating, you should get 204.73 Kelvin. And then let's subtract 273.15 to see what we'll get for Celsius. You should get negative 68.4 degrees Celsius. Here, just make sure that you do not change the sig figs till the till the very end. Here I knew there were going to be three sig figs, so I, you tend to want to save uh, more decimal places so you don't cut any of that off when it comes to rounding. So just be very careful to um, not put it in sig figs till the very end. All right, so I have problem two for you, so why don't you pause the video and try this, and then click play and I'll have the answer. All right, so going over this problem, just a few things. Um, make sure you convert everything uh, before plugging it in. So here I converted my milliliters Celsius to get 31 liters. I then converted my 87 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. I got 360.15. I then re rearranged the equation. You don't have to rearrange the equation. I just find it a little bit easier um, and less work in the long run. Here I end up getting with two sig figs, 1.3 moles. Okay. All right, moving on. Let's look at problem three. So suppose we have a sample of ammonia gas with this volume and pressure. The gas is compressed to a volume of this at constant temperature. Use the ideal gas law to calculate the final pressure. So here, we're, um, if you notice, we were given two volumes uh, and we're solving for a final pressure and we were told an initial pressure. So this tells me this is definitely going to be the combined um, gas law. So here, how you use the combined gas law is always start with this and decide what's being constant. Here we have pressure and volume changing and it straight up told us that con uh, it's constant temperature. So I do actually do not need the T, uh, the temperature, be the T variable because if it's constant temperature on either side, they're just going to cross off. Here we have a specific sample of ammonia gas, so moles is not changing either. So our equation is uh, PIVI equals PFVF. Okay, so this is how you use the combined gas law. Always write PV over TN and then decide which variables are constant. Here, plugging stuff in, you actually can keep these at milliliters for volume because they're both milliliters on either side. Okay, so here, pressure one is 1.68 atms, volume is seven milliliters. Uh, we are solving per or PF and our volume is 2.70 milliliters, okay? Next, we're gonna divide by 2.70 milliliters. Because again, we gotta get PF by itself. Here, after uh, multiplying those two and dividing um, and getting three sig figs, I get 4.36 atms. This should be fairly straightforward because here, if we decrease the volume, the pressure should have increased, and, and, in, and so it did in this case. Let's say um, it ended up decreasing, you probably set it up wrong. All right, um, I'm gonna pause the video. Why don't you try the you do on this one? Just make sure that everything is in the correct units. Um, and yeah, start off by writing PV over TN, deciding which variables are constant. All right, so in this one, after putting the ideal gas law, I noticed that moles was staying constant, so I crossed off N. I first also converted all the temperatures in Kelvin, and then I left the pressures in Tor because they would have been on Tor on either side. 
Uh, here I left my volume as milliliters because the, the, the question is looking for the volume in milliliters. Um, I first, what I did though, on the left side, I multiplied and divide all of this to get this number. And then I divided these two numbers to get this one. And I try to keep at least three to four decimal places. In this case, I want six. Um, but here, the more numbers you have, the less um, issues of rounding will come when you look for your final answer in the correct number of sig figs. Um, based off volume, I needed to put my answer to three sig figs just because you had three sig figs from the tour. And so here, I think I got 3,072. So here, rounding that down to 70, 3,070 will give us the three sig figs of the three, the zero, and the seven. All right, moving on. So again, Dalton's law of partial pressures. In a sample containing a mixture of ideal gases, the pressure exerted by each component the partial pressure is independent of the other components. So looking at this diagram right here, you can see that P1 and P2 will be giving off different pressures. So here we call this partial pressure. And so here, think one set of conditions at start. So what that means is, if you know volume and temperature, as well as pressure for P1, well actually if you're given volume, temperature, and moles, you can find out the partial pressure given off in this one, and you can use Hivnert for these two if you need to find out how many moles there were. And then that can actually help you in the end based off these new conditions. So we'll look at some problems where you may have to calculate a variable from the initial set before moving on. All right, so let's do this scuba dive um, tank problem together. So for a particular dive, um, you're gonna have helium and oxygen and they're pumped into a tank with this volume of five liters. So here you have essentially looking at that diagram before, that's essentially what's happening. You have helium and oxygen in separate containers, and then you're pumping them into the same container. So we want to calculate the partial pressure of each gas and the total pressure in the tank at 25 degrees Celsius. So what's happening is you have helium, 46 liters, and then you have a smaller thing of oxygen, 12 liters, and they are pumped into the same container, um, helium plus O2, 5 liters. So here we were told volume, temperature, and pressure for the helium and the oxygen, but we weren't told how much was there. So here your first step is to solve for moles because we need to see how many moles are going into that container because there's no other way to solve this problem. So here to solve for helium, I will be doing NRT over V of helium. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Here we're solving for moles, PV over RT. Sorry, we'll be using partial pressure later. Um, here we're, we're solving for moles based off the conditions inside the container because they're both one, T, one ATM. So here, one ATM, volume is 46 liters, R is 0 0.08206. Temperature is 298.15 Kelvin. And I just quickly did 25 plus 273.18. And then we'll solve for the moles of oxygen. I'll calculate these in just a second. Here, based off oxygen's conditions, 1 ATM, 12 liters, 0 0.08206, and 298.15. So essentially, the only variable that is different um, is going to be the volume at which they are in, okay? Because, I mean, they're technically giving the same pressure, but don't think that you do one plus one to get total pressure because there's a new volume that they have entered. So now I have my moles of helium and oxygen because I can make the assumption both of those, all of those, will be going into this new container of five liters. So to continue the problem, you actually have two paths that you can go. You can solve for the partial pressure separately just using PV equals NRT, because we actually know um, 
the, the container's volume, the tank's volume, as well as the temperature at which the tank is at. So we actually have access to the PV equals NRT. Let's say we didn't have this, we would be stuck using Dalton's law of partial pressures because here we would use these moles to find the mole fraction. Um, and then we would actually have to be told total pressure. Um, but here it didn't tell us the total pressure in this problem. So we have no choice but to use PV equals NRT. So to solve for the partial pressure of helium, we're going to be using the new conditions. So this right here is old conditions. Old conditions as their separate container. Now I'm going to use the new conditions. Talking about this new 5 liter volume uh, tank that we're pumping these gases into. So here, helium, I added 1.88 moles. 0 0.08206 multiplied by 298.15 and now we're in a five liter container. I'm going to actually set up the oxygen one as well just to save my time because I can calculate both of them together. Here the only thing that changes for this one is the amount of moles that are entering the container. Here, we should get that helium is going to be 9.2 atm and that the oxygen is going to be 2.4 atm. So to solve for P total, all we have to do is take helium, par uh, partial pressure, and oxygen. You should get 11.6 atms for total pressure. Okay, so here we got partial pressures of both gases and we solve for total pressure. Another way that you could have done this is you could have added both of these moles together and then use PV equals NRT to get the total pressure. That also would have worked as well, but then you would need to um, end up doing the mole fraction um, or you can use partial pressure again, but it'd probably be a lot of work to solve partial pressure of, of them separately rather than just getting total pressure and so on. Okay. All right. Moving on, I have this problem for you, so why don't you pause the video, try this out yourself, um, and then press play and see how I approached it. All right, so let's go over this together. So here, I was given moles of each of them, so my first instinct was to get total moles. Um, another reason why I started with this approach is because I'm only told moles and pressure uh, in this problem, so I can't even use volume or temperature. So here I'm going to be stuck using Dalton's law of partial pressures in this problem because we're going to assume that they're going to be constant. So here I got total moles and so then I did the mole fraction for all three of these gases taking their moles divided by total. Here I got 0 0.44, 0 0.444, 0 0.333, and 0 0.222. Here, the next part was to solve for the partial pressure of each gas. So here, I'm going to use this equation right here, taking the total pressure, because they told me total pressure of 5 atms, and I multiplied 5 by each of their mole fractions. And so here, I got all the partial pressure of nitrogen, CO2, and argon. And if I add up all three, I should get what the total pressure was of 5 atm, which I did. And just to note, remember that mole fraction, adding all of those up should equal one, talking about the relative abundance. All of those should equal one because we assume 100% of the, of the mixture of gases inside that container.